good morning and welcome you all to this session of the course on fluid machines. Last class we have discussed the evolution of axial flow turbines and a purely axial from a radial flow turbine and a purely axial flow turbine is named as Kaplan turbine uh, following the name of the Austrian engineer Victor Kaplan who developed a lot contributed a lot to the development of this machine. Now, in this class we will discuss the governing the basic principle of governing of reaction turbines both radial flow or axial. Now, if we recall uh, the genesis of governing that the governing is required to maintain the speed of the rotor of the turbines fixed. This is because the generator electrical generator or alternator which is coupled to the turbine to generate electrical power from mechanical power has to rotate with a fixed rpm fixed value rotation of the fixed value of the rotational speed to maintain the constancy in frequency of electrical power output. And the turbine rotor maintains the constancy in the rotational speed by a balance between the driving torque and the resisting torque and the resisting torque comes from the electrical load which may change because of the demand. So, whenever there is a change in the electrical load the resisting torque changes and accordingly the speed of the rotor changes for a given driving torque which is imparted by the flowing fluid by the rate of change of its angular momentum. This is the basic principle gross overall. Now, to adjust with this we have to control the input energy of the fluid accordingly to balance to make a balance with the resisting torque. So, that the driving torque is adjusted accordingly and this is accomplished by altering the fluid flow to the turbine and this is precisely what is governing and in Pelton wheel we have seen that this has been made with the help of a spear valve, which is very important in this concept that while making this governing two things have to be always kept in mind. One is that while governing changing the flow rate we have to be very careful that the condition for the operation of the turbine that is the operating conditions in relation to the operating parameters should not change much that the turbine efficiency falls drastically. For an example, we have seen that for a Pelton wheel it runs at the maximum wheel efficiency when the ratio of wheel efficiency or overall efficiency when the ratio of the blade speed to that of the jet speed incoming water jet speed is ha is having a fixed value. Theoretically it is 0.5 for the wheel efficiency, but practically for an overall efficiency it values lies sometime somewhere between 0.45. So, therefore, one has to be very careful to keep this value round this figure otherwise the efficiency of the Pelton turbine will drastically fall. So, therefore, this is one aspect we have to be very careful from the operating parameters point of view that while changing this flow rate, while you change the flow rate the velocity inlet velocity of the fluid will change. So, therefore, we have to see that whether this change the operating condition or not to reduce the efficiency. And number 2 is that sometimes there is a demand to drastically reduce the flow. For example, load is suddenly reduced. So, that the speed will go exceedingly high. So, therefore, to maintain the constancy in speed you have to reduce the flow flow of fluid suddenly. And as you know a sudden reduction of flow in any hydraulic circuit causes a problem like water hammer. If you suddenly close the flow at a downstream section this increases the pressure immediately at the downstream section which trans is transmitted to the in the flow to the upstream section and the velocity of transmission is equal to the acoustic speed relative to the 
velocity of the fluid at that state. In an incompressible flow, this transmission is very fast. So, if very fast, it reaches the upstream section and again is getting reflected back from the upstream side to downstream side and the deflection of pressure wave causes a problem known as water hammer, which is detrimental for the hydraulic system. So, therefore, to reduce the problem of water hammer caused by sudden reduction of flow at the downstream section of a hydraulic circuit or hydraulic system has to be avoided. So, therefore, two things have to be kept in mind in governing a hydraulic machines that the governing should be made in such a way that it should not alter the operating parameters to reduce the efficiency drastically otherwise and at the same time the water hammer problem is not caused. Now, in reaction machines this is done by this mechanism I show you. So, in reaction machines this is done like this, this is a reaction turbine you see this is the scroll casing or volute where the water is entering that is the inlet to the water this is the turbine. Now, the as I have told earlier here it is not shown the turbine as it comes from the scroll casing it meets the stay vents and the wicket gates and these wicket gates are the guide vents which are pivoted at some point and it can be rotated or swiveled about this pivotal point to change its area of flow that means the passage area through which the fluid flows and by changing this area the fluid flow rate is adjusted. So, this pivotal point is the main point of the wicket gate or the guide vents. These points are now linked through levers connected to levers through a regulating ring connected through levers through the links and levers through this to this regulating ring. Here actually this connection of this pivot of the pivotal points of this wicket gate or the pivots of the wicket gates through links and levers to the regulating ring is not shown in the figure. So, it is the regulating ring where these wicket gates the pivots of the wicket gates are linked are connected through the links and the levers. Then you see here which is very clear this regulating ring is connected by two regulating rods at this end by the two regulating rod and the other end of the regulating rod is connected by a regulating lever you see the regulating lever to the servo motor piston of a oil pressure governor this is a oil pressure governor this is connecting to oil pressure governor piping where the pressure pressurized oil enter. So, this is the oil pressure governor and this is the servo piston of the governor. So, lever is connected to like this. So, what is done in case of changing load which is sensed by this oil pressure governor actuates this lever and finally, through the regulating rod and the regulating ring to the pivots of the wicket gate and finally, control the position of the wicket gate alters the position of the wicket gate and adjust the flow rate and accordingly the mass flow rate entering into the turbine. The mass flow rate entering into the turbine inlet here through scroll case remains same, but when it is adjusted throughout the system demands a altered mass flow rate. When the load is reduced a reduced mass flow rate, when the load is increased an increased mass flow rate. So, this way the by the actuation of the oil pressure governor through this lever and the regulating rod and regulating ring this is being controlled. And this way the control of all the reaction machines is done, but apart from this there is another mechanism which is acting parallel to this which is not shown here that there is a relief or pressure valve, relief valve or we can tell that pressure regulator in the main line that means, here in the main line in the main line which diverts the water other way and not allows it to reach the turbine inlet. That means, it diverts the water reaching from the turbine inlet. It is almost similar to a deflector vents which is not shown in this figure that is why I am not showing this figure deflector vents as you have seen are deflectors 
they deflect the jet before going to this servo motor or this PR valve that is out or a different way. So, that it cannot reach the turbine. Here also the pressure regulator or relief valve does the same thing and in both the cases the two things work simultaneously together. This is known as double regulation. For example, here one through the regulating ring and the oil pressure governor and parallelly by this relief valve. Some flow is already diverted by the relief valve. For example, in a Pelton wheel double regulation works, some flow is already diverted not allowed to reach the inlet of the turbine by diverting its way by the splitter or splitter blade or deflector blade. And the rest part which is going to the turbine is being controlled by the movement of the spear that is the spear valve mechanism. Here also the double regulation takes place by the help of this and the pressure regulator both these things. And in case of sudden reduction of flow when the load is suddenly reduced this pressure regulator is dominant one to reduce that. So, that the effect of water hammer is reduced as I have already told that effect of water hammer is a severe concern and one of the important points to be considered. So, to uh, take care of the prevent the water hammer problem this pressure regulator or the relief valve in case of reaction turbines and uh, the deflectors in case of Pelton wheel serves the purpose. They act as the sole regulating device. Now, in axial flow turbines that is the Kaplan turbine, turbine in the type of Kaplan turbines, they are along with that while the mass flow rate is very huge, they are a change in the mass flow with the load is little sensitive. So, they are what is made sometimes along with the stator or guide vanes that is the wicket gates, the runner blades are adjustable to change its area, cross sectional area of flow to adjust the flow rates or to alter the flow rate. So, along with the wicket gates there is a probability or provision of changing the flow area in the runner blade to change the or to accommodate the changed mass flow. So, this is in addition to that and it is usually uh, made in practice in case of axial flow turbine, purely axial flow turbine that is the Kaplan turbine. Okay. Now, after this uh, governing mechanism, I will show you certain uh, characteristic curve uh, of a reaction turbine in dimensionless parameters. Of course, the quantity is not there, it is not quantitative, but it is a qualitative. Carb 1 is this capacity and head, this is divided by this q by d square divided by g h to the power half. Okay. So, this is the second curve, second curve is the hydraulic efficiency and third curve is p by this is if you see is p by rho d square g h to the power 3 by 2. Okay. So, this is the. So, all these dimensionless parameters are derived from the basic pi terms which we derived at the beginning. For example, if you remember we derived pi 1 is q by n d q pi 2 is g h by n square d square. Okay. So, you can get this term you see very well that pi 1 by root over pi 2. If you make that you get root over pi 2, if you make this then you get q by d square. Similarly, you get this term if you remember pi 4 is p by rho n q d 5. Similarly, one term pi 3 was there rho n d square by mu like that pi 1, pi 2, pi 3, pi 4. Another pi term was there which was just uh, this elastic uh, consideration of elastic force that is for compressible fuel. Okay. 
Now, if you combine this pi 1, pi 2, pi 3, pi 4, you get these terms like that one I have given an example that pi 1, pi 2 like that. So, this is a non dimensional flow rate or the capacity, this gives a trend like that, this is a decreasing trend for all reaction turbines with actually if you see this figure, G h is there in normalizing this flow rate and G h is there also normalizing this N d and so therefore, this can be exclusively th thought just by seeing the trend is the influence of Q with N. Now, the hydraulic efficiency curve and this is these are almost the same curve and this shows at maximum at a particular rotational speed. It increases and then again it falls down. This is purely a qualitative trend you can have a look on it. Now, after this before closing the lecture on the reaction turbines, I will show you the most interesting part with which we started this class on hydraulic machines that the role of specific speed. Specific speed was a dimensionless parameter. From the basic dimension and analysis with the application of Buckingham's pi theorem, we derived the non-dimensional terms which maintain the principle of similarity of fluid machines belonging to a particular homologous series. Now, you can appreciate what is a homologous series. Pelton wheel is one homologous series. Francis turbine is one homologous series, Kaplan turbine is another homologous series. So, therefore, machines of a particular homologous series, if we sort similarity between the different machines of a particular homologous series, then those pi terms or the non dimensional term which are similarity known as similarity terms have to be made same. Now, a combination of these have been made to derive a parameter which is again the similarity parameter and it is also it also physically signifies the principle of similarity between the different machines of a same homologous series, but this combination is done to get rid of the dimension of the machine that the diameter of the rotor and in case of turbine this was done involving rotational speed power of the turbine and the head available and in case of the uh, pump or compressor it is the rotational speed the flow rate through the machines that pumps and compressors and the head developed by the fluid. And this is very useful in practice at that time we discussed this is first divide in terms of dimensionless quantities, then you got rid of certain constant values for example, for incompressible fluid if you recall the density and the local gravity is always constant we got rid of this and we derived some dimensional specific speed. Then we discussed that the specific speed represents a particular specification of a homologous series in a way that specific speed contains the operational parameter, most useful operational parameters by which a pump or a turbine is specified. For example, for a pump it is N, P and H. So, if you know the N, P, H values for designing a pump, particular pump it has to produce this power under this head and it has to rotate at this speed, then what is our job? our job is to find out the specific speed and we have to search that which homologous series runs at a high efficiency at that specific speed. Now, you understand that Pelton wheel runs at high efficiency with a very high head that means at low specific speed. So, where the specific speed is low that is obtained from the practical situation then we will employ Pelton wheel. That means, which type of turbine or which homologous series will be employed there is the starting point of the design okay. and that is done by reading the information from a figure or by evaluating this analytically that which homologous series gives the maximum efficiency for that specific speed. And in fact, when we tell colloquially this machine has this specific speed means that machine may be many specific speed because it may have any value this is a combination of parameter, but a machine has this specific speed or this range of specific speed means this machine runs at maximum efficiency or very high efficiency at this value of specific speed or in this range of specific speed. So, here you see that this is the specific speed versus efficiency this Pelton wheel you see has almost 94 percent efficient, but at a very low speed. This is dimensional specific speed. This is dimensional. That means, here we know that N s t is N 
p to the power half divided by h to the power 5 by 4. So, what is missing rho to the power half and g to the power 5 by 4 in the denominator that is missing. So, therefore, this is probably the missing thing. So, you see you check it with the non dimensional specific speed. So, this is the dimensional specific speed. here the number is non dimensional specific speed probably the missing quantity in the denominator will be rho to the power half and g to the power 5 by 4. So, it is Francis turbine. So, Francis turbine is efficient more than 94 percent okay, 96 percent like that, but the specific speed increases. Similarly, is the axial flow turbine it is relatively flat. So, axial flow turbine is therefore, suited better because at this high speed when the specific speed is here dimensional specific speed you see how the efficiency of the pelton will fall. That means, if we have a specific speed somewhere here non dimensional dimensional specific speed we can never recommend pelton wheel. If the specific speed very high non dimensional specific speed is this value for example, we will always refer the Kaplan or axial flow turbine. So, therefore, this graph is very indicative for the starting point of the design this is the preliminary picture where you get the value of the this efficiency is the overall efficiency with the dimensionless specific speed. So, therefore, for a particular operation if we know the specific speed we have to find out that which homologous series which type of the turbine is best suited for it by judging its efficiency at that particular specific speed. So, therefore, with this uh, I will uh, close uh, the session on uh, turbines. Okay. We have discussed Pelton wheels first that is the impulse flow turbine purely tangential direction where the turbine rotors are open to atmosphere it does not need any casing for technical purpose. Then next one is the reaction turbine which is purely radial type reaction turbine where the flow at the inlet is radial outlet is radial that is known as Francis turbine following the name of the engineer who contributed a lot to his development. Then we uh, discussed the axial flow turbine first we understood what how the concept of axial flow turbine was evolved since the head is reduced and with the reduced head if we want substantial power at a higher efficiency then we have to go for uh, axial flow turbine and we discussed that the basic features of an axial flow turbines and at the same time we have discussed the basic principle of governing the turbines why the governing is required and how in general the governing is made for both impulse turbine and the reaction turbine. With this I will conclude the discussion on hydraulic turbines. Thank you.